Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Bob Hope, Madeline Carroll, and Ralph Bellamy in Love is News. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. A Confucius of the newspaper business once said, It's not news when dog bites man, but it's definitely news when man bites dog. So when Cupid throws a dart at a matinee idol, it's just routine. But when Bob Hope machine guns Cupid, ladies and gentlemen, love is news. In fact, Bob, Bob chucks the, the whole tradition of courtship right out the window and invents his own system as he goes along. As a star reporter... He proves that he has an eye for beauty as well as a nose for news by selecting Madeline Carroll as the lady who uh, ruins his disposition. But it takes three to make this romance, and Ralph Bellamy is a third party that even Bob can't laugh off. Love is News brings Bob to this stage for the first time in his history and ours. We've been trying to find him a play since last spring, but it was Bob himself who finally found this one. He telephoned me one day from his golf club, and said he'd just solved the problem in a sand trap. I'll admit I was a little ashamed. There I'd been sitting in a nice cool office, hunting for a Bob Hope play, and Bob, out there suffering on a blazing hot golf course, had beaten me to it. But those who saw this play on the screen needn't be alarmed if we've taken a few liberties with the script. In fact, with Mr. Hope playing the reporter, the script hasn't been the same at any two rehearsals. You'll hear Madeline Carroll as a high-handed heiress in this gay comedy, and Ralph Bellamy as a um, semi-hard-boiled city editor who sends Bob on the biggest news story of his life, if you admit that love is news. Of course, beauty is news, too, and that's where Lux Toilet Soap comes in. Most women know all about Lux Toilet Soap, but those who don't will find it good news indeed. Now the linotypes hum, the press is raw, and the curtain rises on the first act of Love is News, starring Bob Hope as Steve Layton, Madeline Carroll as Tony Gateson, and Ralph Bellamy as Marty Canavan. First with all the news, circulation one million. So reads the electric sign on the New York Daily Express building. Just at the moment, however, the editorial staff of this model of American journalism is in a holiday mood. On an overturned wastebasket stands the paper's ace reporter, Steve Layton, holding high a funeral wreath of roses which bears the motto, Rest in Peace. The staff crowding around cheers him on jubilantly. <laughs> Go ahead, Steve, speech, speech. Quiet, please, quiet. Quiet, my dear friends, fine journalists all. We are gathered here today to mourn the loss of our dearly beloved Daily Express. Shocked to an untimely death by the appointment of a new city editor, that heartless, soulless, journalistic Simon Legree, Martin J. Canavan. I'll take a hiss on that. <laughs> you make a snappy, Pete. He'll be here in a minute. And so I give you our new editor, Martin J. Canavan, that sinister spawn of Satan, that perfume pig, that rose-watered rat. Stop me if you've heard this before. Martin J. Canavan. That new city editor of the Daily Express. Good morning. Steve, it's Canavan. Good morning, Mr. Good morning. Canavan. Hold it, everybody. Don't leave, please. Hello, Steve. What's cooking? Oh, we're roasting a little ham. Hi, Mr. Rat. Well, well, roses. For me? Yeah, we hear your hay fever started again. <laughs> My dear friends, I'm deeply touched by this tribute of affection and esteem. I've been summoned to instill new life into this anemic, debilitated rag of a newspaper. And I'm looking forward joyously to the full cooperation of every member of this staff. I mean to have it or else. Whoever's not on his toes will be out on his ear. That's all. Boy! Yes, Mr. Canavan? Deliver these flowers to Miss Daisy Delroy, Central Park Hotel, room 428. Yeah, then run down quick to 328 and catch her. She falls through the floor. Beat it. Go on. Yes, sir. Now, let's see. Where could it be? Are you looking for something, Mr. Canavan? Yeah, your resignation, sir. There isn't any. Meaning you're going to stick? No, meaning that I want you to fire me again. I love to hear that cute little speech you always make. <laughs> you're talking about the time I threw you off the star. Yeah, funny, wasn't it? <laughs> Step into my office, will you, Steve? Now, look, Stevie, what do you say we bury the hatchet? I got a tough job in my hands, and I need your help. We've had our little differences, but what about it? 
We've had a lot of great times together, too, haven't we? <laughs> Remember the night I dressed you up as a chambermaid? You stole the papers out of Colonel Randolph's apartment? <laughs> Boy, did you look like a real chambermaid. <laughs> yeah, I'm still getting Valentine's from the butler. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> and say, how about the night we got boiled and rode horseback down Broadway? <laughs> oh, Stevie, don't. <laughs> then you rode the horse into the Astor Hotel and tried to get a room? <laughs> I remember. And the horse wanted twin beds. <laughs> stop. Oh, Stevie, stop. <laughs> well, what do you say, huh? To what? To sticking with me. Tell you what I'll do. Just a minute. Yes, Mr. Canavan. Hello, Miss Lane. Listen. Draw up a year's contract for Steve Layton with a $25 a week increase. Yes, sir. Well, Stevie, is there anything else I can do for you? Remember the last time you tore up my contract and gave me a new one? <laughs> you tore up the new one? Yeah. <laughs> Remember when I called you that day? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you're the same thing now, only fatter. Why, <laughs> that dirty two-timing heel. Come back here, you. Hello, what do you want? I'm busy. Long distance, Mr. Canavan, Cleveland. All right, put it on. I'll kill that. Hello, Marty. Please. Who is this? This is Eddie Saunders. I'm in Cleveland. Listen, Marty, I've got a hot tip to start you on your new job. Yeah, what? Marty, you know Tony Gateson. Who doesn't know her? Well, she just left here on a plane for New York. Gets in at three, your time. Yeah, is the count with her? No, that's the story. She walked out on the count this morning in Chicago. Eddie, you're a sweetheart. I'll get you 50 bucks for this. Goodbye. Miss Lane? Yes, sir? Mr. Finley in his office? Yes, sir. Well, tell him I'm on the way in. I led my class in journalism, Mr. Finley. Very interesting. Well, not only that, but, well, I was elected Phi Beta Kappa and graduated maxima cum laude. You don't say. So, so if you'll give me an opportunity, Mr. Finley, I'll hey, give it to him. Hey, I just heard... Oh, uh, one second, Marty. Sorry, my boy, I'd like to give you a job, but there isn't an opening at present. Oh, oh, I see. Wait a minute. You a college man, kid? Oh, yes, sir, I am. All right, you're hired. Now, listen carefully. Yes, sir. Go down to Mike Allegre Allegretti's joint around the corner. Uh -huh. You'll find a reporter there named Steve Layton. Yeah? Tell him Mr. Canavan sent you for his police card and that you're going to interview Antoinette Gates, who arrives at the airport at 3 o'clock. Oh, yes, sir. Tony Gateson. This kid could never cover that yarn. Leave it to me, kid. Beat it. Go on, son. Yes, sir. I'm giving you the chance of a lifetime. I shall arrive behind my shield or on. Marty. What's the idea of sending a cub on a tough assignment like that? He must be nuts. Oh, just psychic. What do you think's likely to happen when the kid asks Steve for his police card? Well, Steve will punch him right in the nose. Right. What do you think Steve, uh, Steve will think when he learns that there's a Tony Gates and scoop in the office? Well, I know what he'll do. He'll break his neck trying to get to the airport himself. He'll fire... Right again, Mr. Finley. Yeah. You know, Marty, I, I'm sorry about that kid's nose. That's life, Chief. That's life. <laughs> Hello, who is this? Speak louder, I can't hear you. This is Edelson. Oh, hello, son, where are you? I'm just alone. Yeah, yeah, go on. Did you find Steve Layton all right? What'd he say? Well, he's Johnny Fuss, the old Finney show. What? Well, he's Johnny Fuss, the old Finney show. Why, you... You're drunk, aren't you? Yes, sir, I am. I'll break your neck, you dumb little squirt. I'll... 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 Hello, Marty. Well, come in, Mr. Layton. That was a nice stunt you pulled, you double-crossing rat. You got that boy drunk. That boy got drunk himself on two beers. One with a Mickey. <laughs> Furthermore, you're a bigger heel than I thought you were. You sent him down there to burn me up. Well, your trick didn't work, Marty. Every sheet in town has the gates and scoop now except the Daily Express. How do you like that? I'll admit I pulled some fast ones, but I never stooped as low as that. I'll fix it so you'll never get another job in this town. Get me Findlay. It's no use. He drinks, too. <laughs> I'll show you. Findlay speaking. Hello, Mr. Findlay. We've been double-crossed on the Gates and Scoop, the dirtiest, slimiest deal I've ever been handed. Who did it? Steve Layton. And it's up to us to see that every editor in town hears about it. What'd he do? He got the new kid drunk. So drunk he couldn't cover the story. Then he kidded him into blabbing the tip to every other rag in town. Give me that phone. Hello, Mr. Findlay. It's a lie. You'll get your story and it'll be exclusive. And as for you, Mr. Canavan, this is what I should have done to your college boys. <clears throat> By the time you come to, I'll have your story sewed up. Oh. Oh. Marty, Marty, is it okay? Does Steve leave? Yeah. You going to cover the story for us? That's right. Ah, <laughs> Marty, that's great. Fell for it like a ton of bricks, didn't he? Yeah. Me too. Step by from Chicago, arriving at gate three. Hey, you. Get back to that gate. You ain't allowed on the field. Oh, good afternoon, officer. Say, hey, keep this under your hat, but I'm here to meet Miss Tony Gateson. Oh, you are? Well, no reporters allowed in the field, see? I know, officer. I've got a police escort waiting to make sure no reporters get to her. Oh, yeah? Sure, watch. 
All right, boys, keep that gate closed. Nobody goes out to meet that plane except me. Yes, sir. See, officer? Okay, by me. Tony. Oh, Tony, when do we come down? Do you feel any better, darling? No. Well, come on, buck up. We're practically in. In where? New York, darling. And 1,000 miles from His Highness Count Roberto Donzelli, the blue-blooded moron. Tony, I don't think you should talk that way. Roberto's a charming gentleman. Well, if he were my fiancé... Ex-fiancé. All right, ex-fiancé. If he were my ex-fiancé, well, I'd be a little kinder to oh, him. Oh, Lois, darling, you're sweet, but you are a little naive. Wait till you come into Aunt Phoebe's millions. Wait till every man you meet looks into your eyes and sees only a bank account. And wait till a lot of nosy reporters start making a side show out of your private life. Oh, what do you care what those stupid papers print? Oh, I suppose I should laugh stuff like this off. Look at this paper. Tony Gates buys herself a count. Tin can countess says American men are boors. Exclusive interview by Steve Layton. You never said that, did you? Never said it. Why, I've never even seen the lying snoop. He got that interview from a maid I fired. I can never understand why they call them gentlemen of the press. Oh, oh thank heaven we're here. Let's get out quick. Oh, Miss Gateson. Yes? Uh, who are you? Oh, how are you, Miss Gateson? I hate to tell you this, but there's a mob of reporters waiting at the gate. There, you see, Louis? However, I have a police escort to see you to your car. Oh, that's awfully nice of you. If I may suggest, Miss Gateson, if we send your friend out with the police, the reporters will think it's you and you can get away by yourself. Oh, that's a great idea. Will you do it, Louis? Of course. All right. Uh, put your collar up, darling. Go ahead. I'll see you at Uncle Cyrus's house. All right. Good luck, darling. Nice trick if it works. Oh, you leave it to my men, Miss Gates, and we put it over in those smart aleck reporters before. Pests, all of them. Pests? They're worse than that. They're rats. They certainly are. In fact, they're great big rats. They certainly are. And and the head rat is that fellow Steve Layton. He certainly... Yes, sir. <laughs> reporters are awful. They always bother passengers, especially when they're celebrities like yourself. <laughs> now, don't tell me you want my autograph. No, but I would like a cigarette. Oh, certainly. Uh, here. Oh, thank you, but... <laughs> I don't think I'll smoke this. I think I'll save it for my grandchildren as a souvenir of the beautiful Countess Donzelli. <laughs> well, if that's what you're saving it for, have a life. Well, well, you mean there will be no Countess Donzelli? Just between the two of us, it's over. Finished. On the level? Say, those reporters out there would like to know about that. <laughs> I know it. All I want is just a few days so I can get just as much distance between me and the Count as possible. All he wanted was my $10 million. Well, nobody thought he wanted to marry you just to escape the draft. <laughs> But you know what the papers will say, that you've gone to hunt another count. Well, there'll be just about as much truth in that as everything else they've printed about me. No, the next man who puts a ring on this finger will have to have a good old American title, like, uh, like plumber, bricklayer, motorman, anything but reporter. Tony. Lois, what's the matter? Those reporters just told me. Do you know who this man is? He's that Steve Layton from the Express. What? And judging by that smirk on his face, he's tricked you into telling him plenty. Young lady, you're an excellent judge of smirks. <laughs> Porter. How nice. <laughs> it's getting a bit chilly in here. Uh, goodbye, Miss Gateson. Thank you very much for the cigarette and the pleasant chat. Which you will now distort into a pack of lies. I've got to give our readers what they want. I wonder how you'd like being mobbed by a bunch of peeping toms. How would you like being a public freak? Uh, for your dough, I'd be Jojo the dog face boy. <laughs> that leaves me wide open, doesn't it? <laughs> So it's no go. You won't kill the story. I can't. Sorry. All right, you win. Mr. Layton, you're very ingenious about getting in and out of places. Maybe you can suggest how I can get out of here without being annoyed by those other reporters. Oh, well, that's easy. You just get the pilot to taxi the plane to the edge of the field, jump over the fence by the greenhouse, have your car come around and pick you up there. Well, now, that's wonderful. Why didn't I think of that? You wouldn't by any chance like me to give you a lift back into town, would you? Say, thanks. You know, you're being a pretty good sport about this thing. Oh, that's all right. You go ahead in my car and I'll meet you. All right, see you at the greenhouse. See you at the greenhouse. Tony, what are you going to do? He'll print everything you say. Oh, no, he won't. I'm going to fix that gentleman's wagon right now. Get those other reporters here. What? Well, how? Officer, let those reporters through the gate, will you? Yes, please. Tony, what are you going to do? Yes, Just watch. Hey, Miss Gates, how are they counting out? Quiet, gentlemen, one at a time, please. Uh, you boys want a statement, I suppose. Yeah, oh, yeah. All right, here it is. Miss Antoinette Gates, and Tony to you boys, takes pleasure in announcing her engagement to Mr. Stephen Layton of the New York Please Express. Hey, wait a minute. Is this on the level? We've been secretly in love for months, and as a little engagement gift, I'm going to give Stevie Kins 
A million dollars, all for himself. <laughs> That's all, boys. If you'll excuse me now, I've got to go and meet my Stevie kittens. We want to be alone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can let me off anywhere along here, Miss Gason. Oh, you don't have to rush off, Mr. Lake. Well, I want to get the story in. You can phone it from Uncle Cyrus's house. Come and have tea. Okay, why not? Say, you don't know what a kick I'm getting out of this, Miss Gason. Really, Mr. Lake? Oh, am I happy, lady? Of course I am. Why, no other rag in town has this story except me. Isn't that wonderful? Right in, Mr. Lake. Uh, thanks. Jones, will you tell Uncle Cyrus I'm here? Very good, Miss Gates. Say, this is a nice little hideout you have here. Two more feet on the entrance hall, and you can lay out a bowling alley. <laughs> Simple little place, but it's home to us. Tony, is that you? Hello, Uncle. How are you, darling? Welcome home, Tony, darling. I... Oh. Who's that? You come? <laughs> no, darling. This is Mr. Layton. My uncle, Mr. Jeffrey. I do, Mr. Jeffrey. Well, who's he? Mr. Layton's a reporter. What? You and the cat drag in the darndest things. <laughs> I've heard nice things about you, too, Mr. Jeffrey, but I... I've heard nicer things about the cat. Do you mind if I use your phone? Thank you very much. Tony, what's this ape doing here? I can't stand reporters, you know that. Neither can I, darling. And what in the name of heaven? Relax, Uncle, you... uh, relax. Hello, Turner. Take this down exactly as I give it to you. Quote, in an exclusive interview with the Express today, Miss Tony Gates and the Tin Can Countess announced that she and the Countdown Zelly have... P-double-F. <laughs> that scandalmonger, I'll, I'll carry him in two. Shh, don't disturb him, darling. He's dictating his own obituary. In her luxurious Fifth Avenue mansion, the disillusioned heiress, fleeing from her amorous fiancé, was welcomed by her uncle Cyrus Jeffrey, the well-known financier and second story man, end quote. Oh, and one thing more. Tell Mr. Marty Canavan that this story is exclusive with a capital E. Inform the gentleman that he can reach me in Mr. Jeffrey's living room where I'm going to be served with tea and crumpets. No, no, crumpets. Listen, you dope, you misunderstood me. Crumpets have nothing to do with swing bands. <laughs> Crumpets, that French for bagel. Miss Gateson, this is the happiest hour of my life. What a story. What a story. Look at this, Findlay. Eris flees from Count. Exclusive interview with Tony Gates. <laughs> That's great, Marty. That's good we've had in months. Say, that reminds me. Yes, sir? Give Steve Layton the $50 bonus. Yes. I always knew he'd be a top man someday. Here you are, Mr. Canavan. Evening editions of the Chronicle, Courier, and Dispatch. Thanks, kid. Wait till they get a load of our front page. <laughs> What's the Courier running as their lead? Let's see. Harris to wed reporter. Tony Gateson will... What is this? Tony Gateson will marry Stephen Layton, reporter. I'm crazy. I'm raving. Look at the Dispatch. Reporter lands Harris. Gets million-dollar dollar. It's a nightmare. Wake me up. The Chronicle. Tony Tyers can't uncount for penniless reporter. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir? Stop the presses. Kill the lead story. Get me a rewrite, man, right away. Take Steve Layton off the payroll. He's fired. Another crumpet, Mr. Layton? Oh, is this a crumpet? Tastes like a dog biscuit that'll go in Hollywood. <laughs> now, listen. You've got your story. Why don't you get out of here? Uncle Cyrus, he's our guest. And anyway, uh, there's something else I've got to tell him. More? Oh, say, that's swell. You've told him plenty already. Now, now, Uncle Cyrus, there's no use getting sore. I just outguessed your niece, that's all. In this newspaper racket, you got to know your way around or you're just out of luck. Uh, Mr. Jeffrey. Well, what is it, Jones? The evening paper, sir. Oh, thank uh, you. Well, let's see the express, will you? <laughs> Thanks. I want to see what they did to my story. Here we are. <laughs> let's see now. Tony Gates in the wet steel... It's a lie! Let me see. <laughs> Who did this? What did it? Let me see. What is it, a murder? Not yet, but there may be. Calm yourself, Mr. Layton. Why, this story is ridiculous. You're not going to marry my niece. Of course not. I wouldn't marry her if she had a million dollars. But I've got ten million dollars. I don't want ten million dollars. What would I do with myself on bank night? <laughs> Tony. Tony, this isn't true, is it? Well, it's just about as true as the other things that gentleman of the press has been writing about me. I'll take that. Hello? Mr. Canavan. Give me that phone. Let go. Uh, yes, Mr. Canavan. Uh, Steve Ickins is here. Give it to me. Why, of course it's true. I'm mad about him. He's my dream man. Give me that phone. Hello. Hello, Marty. This is Layton. Well, well. How are you, Steve Ickins? Cut it out, will you? Listen. That was a nice scoop you got for me, Steve Ickins. A great story. Marty, listen. I didn't give out that yarn. Would I do a thing like that to you? You'd stab your own brother, you two-timing... But I tell you, it isn't true. It's a lie. My word of honor. Your word of honor, you... I wouldn't believe your dying confession. If I ever see that pan of yours around this off again, I'll put, I'll put my foot through it. You're fired. But Marty, Marty! Hello, hello. 
A bit skeptical, your editor, isn't he? Listen, you get on that phone and tell him the truth. Oh, darling, don't be so masterful. After all, we're only engaged. Are you going to retract this story? Retract it? I'm going to build it up. I'm going to keep you on the front page. I'm going to show you what it feels like to be a public freak. Oh, no, you're not. No one is going to make a comedian out of me. I'll have something to say about that. <laughs> I suppose you think they'll take your word against Tony Gayton. Darling, why, you should be flattered. Think of my millions. I'm thinking of millions of your broken bones. <laughs> Nevertheless, we are engaged. Not for long, we aren't. But just as long as it makes news. And when the scandal mongers get tired of reading about that, I'll give them another story. Heiress, heirs, reporter. I've put you in the headlines, Mr. Layton, and I'm going to keep you there. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille and our stars, Bob Hope, Madeline Carroll, and Ralph Bellamy... We'll present Act Two of Love is News. And in the meantime, let's listen in on young Mary Brown, soon to become a bride. <laughs> there. Mary, doesn't that make you even the tiniest bit jittery? Oh, I'm only afraid I'll cry at the wedding. I'm so happy. Well, you'll look lovely, whatever you do, Mary. In fact, you're looking pretty grand right now. Tell me, is that brooch you're wearing a sort of pre wedding gift? Oh, no, I bought it myself. Well, it's beautiful. But I'm afraid you're developing expensive taste. Mm, poor Jim. <laughs> oh, no, Sue. And now, since you've been saying it with music all evening, I'll tell you with music how I got this brooch. Listen. Recognize that tune, Sue? Look, toilet, soap. Oh, of course. But, Mary, what's that got to do with your brooch? Everything. You see, I got this Scarlet O'Hara simulated cameo brooch for only 15 cents and three Lux Toilet Soap wrappers. Scarlet O'Hara brooch? Yes. It's a Lux Toilet Soap special offer, and all you have to do is to get three Lux While Mary is telling her friend how to get a Scarlet O'Hara brooch, I'm going to tell you how to get one, too, because I know you're sure to want one of these exquisite brooches for yourself. The Scarlet O'Hara simulated cameo brooch is designed after a brooch worn by Vivian Lee in Gone with the Wind. The pure white head stands out sharply against an ebony background. The rich, gold-finished setting has a distinctive Grecian border design that sets the seal of fine craftsmanship on this brooch. Helps make it the distinctive, expensive-looking jewelry piece it is. Actually, it has a safety clasp, too. Now, here's how you can get your Scarlet O'Hara simulated cameo brooch. Buy three cakes of gentle white Lux toilet soap and ask your dealer for a handy order blank or... Just write your name and address on a piece of paper and send it with the three Lux Toilet Soap wrappers and 15 cents in coin. No stamps, please. To Lux Toilet Soap, Box 1, New York City. I'll repeat that address. Lux Toilet Soap, Box 1, New York City. Your Scarlet O'Hara brooch will be mailed to you promptly. And with it, you'll receive an illustrated order blank for additional matching pieces. Ring, bracelet, pendant, earrings. All beautifully designed, all at amazing bargains. So get three cakes of Lux Toilet Soap tomorrow. And send the wrappers and 15 cents in coin to Lux Toilet Soap, Box 1, New York City. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act 2 of Love is News. Starring Bob Hope as Steve Layton, Madeline Carroll as Tony Gateson, and Ralph Bellamy as Marty Canavan. A world eager for heartthrobs has pounced on the romance of the heiress and the penniless reporter. Newspapers scream their innermost secrets. Once again, love's old sweet song is being warbled in headlines three inches high. Read all about it. Tin can heiress dies can on count on jelly. I can't help it, says Tony Gateson. I love my Stevie Ken. Stevie Ken's his dream man. She loves him. She loves him. In the streets, crowds follow the luckless reporter. Autograph hounds pursue him day and night. Everyone is deliriously happy, except Stevikins. Listen, you get him on this phone. I want to speak to you, you understand? I want to... Hello, Stevikins. Oh, good morning, Miss Gateson. How are you feeling, darling? Listen, Miss Gateson, don't you think you've carried this thing far enough? How about calling it off? Oh, so soon. We've only been engaged since yesterday. All right. I admit I got what I deserved. You've had your fun. Come on now. Be a good fellow, will you? I'm sorry, Stevikins, but I'll never give you up. Never. 
Miss Gateson, please, look, meet me for lunch, will you? Some little place where your credit's good. <laughs> Oh, now listen. Some other time, darling. You'll see me today or I'll follow you down to Long Island and disgrace you in front of every friend you have. You just try it. They live in Pine Creek, Stevie Kid. Goodbye. Hello, hello. Who is it? Good morning, Mr. Layton. Oh, hello, Mrs. Flaherty. Listen, if it's about that back rent I owe, I'll gladly pay you just as soon as I get some tens and fives printed up. Oh. oh, go along with you now. Sure, and I'm not to worry about a paltry $30 and you a millionaire, Mr. Layton. Mrs. Flaherty, I am not a millionaire. Oh, now, now, Mr. Layton. I can read the papers as well as the next person. All right, all right, I'm a millionaire. Could you lend me two bucks? Huh? <laughs> I need two bucks to get to Long Island. I've got to see a lady about a dog. What dog? Me. <laughs> Well, how about the two bucks? Well, of course, you're not a millionaire until you get married, are you? All right, never mind. I'll get there somehow. Oh, uh, before I forget, uh, there's some men down in the street waiting to see you. Yeah? Uh, about 30 of them. They all want to sell you something. Uh, what'll I tell them? Tell them I've already got a brush. No, wait a minute. I'll go down and speak to them myself. I've got an idea. Hello there, Mr. Layton. There he is. Oh, Mr. Layton. Oh, wait, 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 I'd like to demonstrate a car, Mr. Layton. Oh, wait. I want to you, Mr. Layton. Oh, wait. Tone it down to a college yell. Look, I'm not buying any stock, and I don't want any more insurance. Where's the guy who wants to demonstrate a car? Hey, that's me. Well, will you demonstrate it out on Long Island? Yes, yeah, sure, sure. All right, come on. It's got a custom-built body and two radios. Hurry up. Hurry now, look, Mr. Layton, you can't let this go. You can't afford it. <laughs> well, how do you like it, Mr. Layton? Hey, listen to that motor. 60 miles an hour and you can hardly hear it. Now we're doing 70. 80! Stop talking and watch for an airport. Say, how are the uh, brakes on this crate? The brakes? <laughs> you never saw brakes like this on any car that was ever built. Watch. Never mind now. I mean, I would just... Hey, cut it out! Cut it out! Look out! Look out! Look out! What are you trying to do? Kill me? <laughs> Some brakes, huh? Yeah, help me pull my head out of the windshield. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Layton. I just wanted to show you what the car would do. Hey, did you see that car go by? She was sure traveling, huh? Yeah, and I saw who was in it, too. Follow that car. I want to speak to the girl in it. Okay. Uh-oh. Wait a second. I think that cop wants to speak to her, too. Drive up and park behind her. I want to get a load of this. Pull over. Pull over. Let's see your driver's license. Sorry, officer, but I haven't got it with me. What did you stop me for? 85 miles an hour on the county highway, 60 miles an hour through the village of Meadowville, failure to stop for a red light, passing four cars on the wrong side, reckless driving, and failure to stop for an officer of the law. That's all so far. All right, hurry up and give me my ticket, will you? This is one time you don't get a ticket, lady. You can't get away with that stuff in Meadowville County. You're under arrest. Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, what do you want? My name is Steve Layton, Your Honor. Mind if I use your phone? Thanks. Listen, young man, this is a courtroom, not a phone booth. Say, I'm all out of nickels, Judge. Got a slug? Sure. Here you are. Wait a minute. Slugs are against the law. Besides, this is my last one. <laughs> Thanks, Judge. If you get in the jam, I'll fix it for you. Say, you have a Miss Gateson under arrest for speeding, haven't you? Yeah, what about it? Hello, Daily Express. Hello, this is Layton. Give me Marty Canavan. If you're her lawyer, you can get her out for $50. That's your fine. Fifty dollars. Well, well. Hello? Hello, Marty. This is Steve. Listen, Marty, I've got something hot. Well, you can keep it. No, listen, this is on the level. They've got Tony Gates in the Meadowville jail. What? For speeding. If you work fast, you can scoop every rag in town. Is this straight? So help me. I'm with the judge right now. Steve, you're marvelous. Wait a minute. I want you to hear something. Miss Lane, put Steve Layton back on the payroll and give him a hundred dollar bonus. Honey, I like that, Stevie. Oh, I'm just thrilled no end. Look, I'll call you right back as soon as I've had a talk with the judge. Good boy, Stevie. That won't do you no good to talk to me. Oh, now, just a minute, Judge. Do you realize that Miss Gateson is America's richest heiress? Yeah, I don't care who she is. I'm going to find her $50. But she's the niece of Cyrus Jeffrey, the railroad king. $75. And the more you talk, the worse it'll be for her. Oh, yeah? Now, look here. Her ancestors came over here on the Mayflower. Well, don't look at me that way. It was an excursion. <laughs> One hundred dollars. I'll appeal the case. Two hundred. I'll take this to the Supreme Court. Oh, you will, huh? Joe, bring in the prisoner. Okay, Your Honor. You big city shysters can't tell me how to run my court. Maybe Miss Gateson will. Oh, she will, huh? 
$300. Here she is, Your Honor. Well, look who's here. Oh, Miss Gates and I, I've just been trying to reason with the judge. Really? Well, that's very sweet of you. I think I've fixed it. Young lady? Yes, Your Honor? Young lady, I've made a slight change in your sentence. Oh, thank you. I hereby fine you $300, 30 days in jail without bail. What? Why, that's ridiculous. 30 days, no back talk. Yes, sir. Come on. I'll see that you're locked up myself. Can I watch too, Judge? I've always wanted to see a mink in the clink. <laughs> well, I'll give you five minutes with her. Then out you go. Five minutes is all I'll need, Judge. Right in there, Miss Keaton. Why, Judge, no bar. I'm not worried about that come Saturday night. <laughs> well, he cleaned that up, didn't he? Well, lovely view, isn't it? Beautiful. She was only a tin can countess, now she's queen of the Metaville can. <laughs> Yeah. Say, pal. Yeah, what? You got a can opener, pal? Shh, shh. Here's a nail file. Start sawing, sister. Hey, this ain't a real jail. What makes you say that, Butch? I don't see George Raft in it. <laughs> hey, listen. I left my vanity case in my car. Would you just grab it and slip it to me? Your vanity case? Yeah. Certainly, Toots. <laughs> don't go away. I'll be right back. Oh, no. I won't go away. Judge! Judge! Help! Judge! Come here, quick! Here, 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 here. What are you making all that noise for? Judge, that man who was just in here, he's robbing my car. What? He's your lawyer, ain't he? Certainly not. He's a thief. Get out there and grab him. I'll grab him, all right. Hurry, Judge, hurry. Hey, you. What are you doing in that car? Oh, I'm just looking for Miss Gates' vanity case. Is that so? Well, come inside and prove it, you sneak thief. Oh, now, wait a minute, Judge. She sent me out for it. Yeah? Well, we'll find out about that. Oh, but, Your Honor, I tell you... Shut up. Hello, pal. Did you catch him in the act, Judge? Well, he said you send him for your vanity key. Well, that's ridiculous. I have it right here. See? Say, what kind You're of... You're under thing? arrest. Get in the next cell. Oh, Judge, this is a frame-up. Get in there. Judge, I tell you, it's a... Get in there. Judge, you can't do this. Shut up. Let me out of here. Let me out of here. You got the wrong guy. It's them Dalton boys that done it. <laughs> Shut up. You're stealing in my own jail. Want to give the place a bad name? What are you in for, pal? Murder? I would be if I could get to you. Here, pal. Here's a nail file. Stop sewing, pal. Yeah, people, people, famous lovers in Middleville Jail. I'm near the man I love, says there is. Extra, extra, Stevie Kins in jail to be near his Tony Kins. Extra. Oh, if I had the wings of an angel over these, these prison walls, I would... Hey, hey, wee Bonnie. <laughs> <laughs> would you mind exercising your adenoids some other time? What's the matter, darling? Don't you like my singing? It's not in my sentence. Over these prison walls, I would fly. I got any one of those right things. in here. There's some friends of yours here to see you, lady. Oh, how marvelous. Look, darling, my friends. Evelyn Lois. Tony. Oh, Tony, this is outrageous. Now, darling, don't excite yourself. They're not hanging me till tomorrow. Oh, I was terribly upset when I heard about it. I was just going to dinner with the Count. And, and Carl? Why, yes. He flew in from Chicago this morning. Antoinette, how is it possible they put you in so terrible a place like this? Hello, Roberto. Oh, it's not so bad. As a matter of fact, it reminds me of your palazzo, especially the plumbing. Tony, darling, is that your Stevikins over there? He's so cute. Yeah, how are you, fatty? <laughs> I'm not fat, just pleasingly plump. What are you trying to do, please everybody? <laughs> Don't mind him, folks. He's, he's a little stir-crazy. Uh, Mr. Latham, my compliments. It took a great lover to win Miss Gates on away from me. Tell me, what is this uh, strange attraction you have for women? Well, all I am and all I ever hope to be, I owe to my sen-sen. <laughs> Where is he? Where is he? Out of my way. Oh, hello, Uncle way. Cyrus. Did you come to arrange my coming out party? I'll have you out of here in a jiffy. That'd be mighty long jiffy. Out of board, Judge. Don't let him bluff you. You keep out of this. Now, listen, Judge, you open that cell. Open it or I'll... I'll have you impeached. Judge, don't let him intimidate you. That's contempt of court. Sure. Oh, I've got a good mind to lock him up, too. What? Why, do you know who I am? No, and I don't care. You're talking to the law. Atta boy, Judge. Remember the power of the press is behind you. You keep on. Shut up. Shut up. I'm going to judge you and get a draw. We'll show you. You're petty, Annie, Judge. We'll show you what... Oh, if I had the wings of an angel... Oh, dear. What's the matter? I'm out of cigarettes. Oh, what a shame. You don't happen to have one, do you? Well, let's see. Yeah, mm mm-hmm. Just one. I think I'll smoke it. 
I don't suppose you could possibly spare me a puff, huh? Well, no, but I tell you what I will do. I'll blow some your way. <laughs> oh, thanks awfully. That's wonderful. Here, you don't deserve it, but I'll give you a puff. Oh, you're a darling. Give me. Uh, 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 I'll hold it. I'll just reach through the bars. One puff, and that's all. Here. I can't reach it there. Here, is that better? A little closer, please. There, that's fine. Oh, oh, you bit me. You bit my hand. Did I know they never could break me of that habit. Oh, and... Well, never mind the finger. Just give me back my ring. <laughs> hey, hey, where's that cigarette? Hand it over. Sorry, but you dropped it in my cell. Find us keepers. My, an ivory tip. You buy them at the corner? No, I've got an elephant in Africa that makes them up for me. <laughs> I'll get even with you for this. You wait and see. Ha, ha. All right, all right. All right, you. Get your things together. You're getting out of here. Judge, are you talking to me? Yes, I am. I just got served with one of them habeas corpuses. i got to let you go. Oh, thank you, Judge. Hey, what about me? You, you're staying in. For how long? Well, I ain't decided yet. But I've set the trial for a week from Tuesday. Oh, now, wait a minute. Now, don't get excited, Mr. Layton. Judge, listen. Do you suppose that if Mr. Layton paid a fine or something, you could let him out now? Well, I guess it could be arranged, yeah, sure. Hey, what is this? Do you mean you're willing to go to the front for me? Well, it's up to you. You want to get out, don't you? Yeah, sure I do, but I can't believe it. Oh, maybe this will convince you of my good intentions. How much is this fine, Judge? Well, now, let me see. I, I'd say about uh, uh, four dollars in cost. That'll make it need five dollars. Five dollars? That's what I said. Well, that's ridiculous, five whole dollars. Hey, what goes on? Now, not a cent cheaper. You're getting a bargain rate as it is. Now, Judge, let's be reasonable. No, not from old mother. No, ma'am. Listen, pay the five dollars and stop Five dollars? I will not. Who does he think he is? We'll appeal a case. That's what we'll do. Don't be ridiculous. We'll You're... fight this thing through to the Supreme Court. Now, look here, young woman. I will not look here. Listen, give him the five bucks and let me Don't out of this trap. Don't you worry, Steve. There's still justice in this country. We'll spring you, pal, and it won't cost a nickel. I'll see a mouthpiece next week. Oh, but listen, when do I get out? Offhand, I'd say about the time the swallows come back from Capistrano. <laughs> well, this ain't the first time I've got the bird. <laughs> well, just for that, young man, I'll postpone your trial. I'll show you. Yes, and we'll show you. Goodbye. Wait, listen. Let me out of here. Let me out of here. In just a few moments, Mr. DeMille and our stars, Bob Hope, Madeline Carroll, and Ralph Bellamy, will return with Act Three of Love is News. Well, here's Sally, all dressed up in a new fall outfit, too. Sally, you look mighty nice. Thanks, Mr. Ruick. I'm glad you noticed, because I'm dressed up for a special reason. Well, Sally, it's that black and white brooch you're wearing that takes my eye. It looks like a million. Now I know women everywhere are going to want one just like it. Well, aren't you going to remind them how to get one? You bet I am. I don't want a single woman in our audience to miss this wonderful offer by the makers of Lux Toilet Soap. The pin Sally is wearing is designed after a brooch worn by Vivian Lee in Gone with the Wind. We call it the Scarlet O'Hara brooch. It's a simulated cameo. A pure white head on an ebony background encircled with a distinctive Grecian border design. The brooch has a gold finish setting that just sets off the black and white center. The fine workmanship and the expensive-looking finish make it a real jewelry piece. And, of course, it has a safety clasp, too. And now I'll tell you again how every woman can own one. Go to your dealer and buy three cakes of Lux toilet soap. Ask him for an order blank, or write your name and address plainly on a piece of paper and send it with the three Lux toilet soap wrappers and 15 cents in coin. No stamps, please. To Lux Toilet Soap, Box 1, New York City. Your Scarlet O'Hara brooch will be mailed to you promptly. Now, I know you're going to be pleased with its smartness and expensive look and delighted with the wonderful bargain you're getting. With your brooch, you'll receive an illustrated order blank for handsome matching pieces to complete your Scarlet O'Hara ensemble. Ring, bracelet, pendant, earrings. All of beautiful design and all at amazing bargain prices. No one can believe me, Mr. Ruick, when I tell them how inexpensive this Scarlet O'Hara brooch is. Everyone thinks it costs a whole lot. And the original Scarlet O'Hara brooch probably did, Sally. But the makers of Lux Toilet Soap are making this marvelous offer to every woman who uses their famous product. And frankly, they believe that the women who haven't yet used Lux Toilet Soap will see in this brooch a practically irresistible reason to try it. And you know, Sally... Once a woman's used Lux toilet soap, 
She's pretty apt to make it her regular complexion care. Well, that's what nine out of ten screen stars have done, Mr. Ruick. That's right, they have. And one thing more. We're having a huge demand for this stunning brooch, so don't delay. Be sure to send your name and address with 15 cents and three Lux Toilet Soap wrappers tomorrow to Lux Toilet Soap, Box 1, New York City. I'll repeat that. Lux Toilet Soap, Box 1, New York City. This offer is good only in the United States. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. KNX Los Angeles, the voice of Hollywood. Curtain rises on the third act of Love is News. A week has passed. Except for Steve Layton's release from jail, the situation remains unchanged, and love is still on the front page. In his humble one-room apartment, public curiosity number one is sewing a button on his coat torn off by a female souvenir hunter. Suddenly the door is flung open and a stranger breezes in. Well, well, Mr. Layton, this is a pleasure. Yeah, who are you? Joe Brady's the name. Just call me Joe. Well, well, doing your own sewing, eh? You millionaires have some funny hobbies, all right. I know one that collects matchboxes. Yeah, what else do you know? Mr. Layton, I'm a man of a few words. I have something here that'll interest you. I know you're rich, but how would you like to make $1,000 a week? $1,000? Why, Major, when do I join the unit? <laughs> all you gotta do is to sign on the dotted line. Sign right there, Steve. Hey, what's all this about? Personal appearances, $1,000, 12 weeks, $12,000. You open at the state Friday. Can you hook, sing? Well, it doesn't matter. All you gotta do is come out, pull a couple of gags, and then tell the peasants how you knocked over the $100 million baby. Get out of here. What? Get out before I throw you out. Hey, now, wait a minute. Go on. Hey, listen, there's a movie contract, too. Now, cut it out. Cut it out. Come in that door again, and I'll murder you. Hello. Oh, oh it's you. How are you, Steve Higgins? If you're doing relief work, the slums are two blocks east. <laughs> well, you wouldn't answer my phone call, so I thought I'd better come over. You'll excuse me if I get on with my sewing, won't you? I let my valet go this evening. Oh, here, let me do that for you. You? You'd probably sew it to my chest. You think so, huh? Yes. Come on, Smarty. Give me the needle. Goodness, how did all the buttons come off your coat? Oh, my stomach is always in there punching. <laughs> there. How am I doing? Pretty wonderful, huh? Yeah, but I still think the button would look better on the outside of the coat. <laughs> Can you cook, too? Beautifully. Hey, maybe I should take our engagement seriously. I'm afraid not. As a matter of fact, I've just come over from a very delightful dinner party for the express purpose of telling you that I'm jilting you. You're what? Oh, I get it. Aris, Aris, reporter. More headlines, huh? Okay, it'll be great. Great publicity. Publicity for what? For my vaudeville tour. The poor reporter gets $1,000 a week for telling the public how he won the $100 million heiress. You wouldn't do anything so cheap. Oh, wouldn't I? Go on, tell the papers that you're going to jilt me. I'll welcome all the publicity you can give me now. Make me just as big a public freak as you can. Go on, jilt me. I'll do nothing of the kind. Then we're still engaged? We certainly are. You're sure? Positive. All right, then. Come here. What did you have in mind, Mr. Layton? Well, I guess it's okay for a fellow to kiss his fiancée, isn't it? Well, I've heard of it, yes. Well, you're seeing it now. Come here. <laughs> well, why... Why don't you say something? I'm waiting for my toes to uncurl. <laughs> Maybe I should have thought of this before. Maybe. Come here. Yes, I'm sure I should have thought of it before. Look, uh, I'm afraid this engagement of ours is impossible. I, I think we'd better call the whole thing off. What? That's like calling off a ball game after the first pitch. Oh, please, I, I'll do anything you suggest. All right. Will you meet me at the Express tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock? I want Canavan to get the story first. He won't believe me, but if you're there... I'll be there. Great. Well, so long. So long. And, and say... Yes? Uh, thanks for the needlework. Oh, that's all right. Well, uh, so long. So long. We said that before. <laughs> yes, we did, didn't we? 
Goodbye. So long. Goodbye. It's on the level, Marty. She's coming at 10 o'clock. You're nuts. Well, just a minute, Marty. Maybe Layton's telling the truth. Why not wait and see? I tell you, it's a waste of time, and I don't want this heel around the office. I tell you, she'll be here. Tony Gates and coming to a newspaper office. Of all the idiotic, imbecilic things. All right, all right, wise gal. Bet you sock in the jaw she shows up her Mr. calls. Mr. Layton, your proposition intrigues me. What's the time limit? She said 10 o'clock. Make it 10 15. Why don't we send your remains, She's Stevie? She's on her way right now. Sure, sure. Get your chin ready, Layton. Good morning, Miss Gates. Good morning, Charles. To the office of the Daily Express, please. And hurry, I'm a little late. Yes, Miss. Tony! Tony! Tony, wait! What's the matter, Uncle Cyrus? It's... It's Lois. She's gone to the city hall to get married to the Count. Lois and the Count? But that's ridiculous. Uh, Nevertheless, it's... It's true. Well, listen, we've got to stop her. Well, Lois is of age. There's nothing I can do. Well, there's something I can do. I'd marry that dope myself before I'd let him ruin her life. Get in the car, Uncle Cyrus. Well, you... You think you can talk him out of it? You don't have to talk to the Count. You just jingle some change in your purse. Come on, let's go. Well, I hope this works. It's got to work. Charles, the city hall, quick. Keep your eye on that clock, Steve. What time does it say? Oh, now, wait a second, Marty. I gave her until 10.15 to show up or call. Stick out your chin, Stevie boy. Well, listen, I've still got five this seconds. This is a pleasure I've been looking forward to for a long, long time. Is your five seconds up yet? Yeah, but I... Good. Oh. Hello? Oh, uh, hey, Steve, it's Tony Gatesy. Oh, why can't women ever be on time? <laughs> it was calling when you socked me. I'm sorry, Steve, I couldn't pull the punch. Hello, is Steve Layton there? Yes, he is. Just a minute. Here, Steve, she wants to speak to you. Hello? Hello, Mr. Layton. Here's a scoop for you. I'm going to be married. Married? To who? To the Count Donzelli. The Count? Oh, now, wait a minute, Tony, you can't do that. I mean, well, we'll think it over. I Oh, but I thought you were all washed up with him. Well, yes, but I... Well, I'm going to marry him. Oh, I see. Well, congratulations. I hope you'll be very happy. Well, so long. So long. Boy, what a scoop. She's marrying the Count, eh? Yeah. I'm sorry I slugged you, Steve. This is terrific. Wait a minute. Seems to me you collected a bet you didn't really win. If we'd have bet money, you'd have to to pay me back, wouldn't you? Yeah, but it wasn't money we bet. That's right, but you can pay it back all right. All right, now, Mr. Layton, we'll rehearse it once again. This act will be a sensation. Go ahead, Tessie, give him a line. Oh, Steve Kim, I'll give you a million bucks. What's money to me? What do I care about society? I love you for yourself alone. Oh, Stevie, sweetheart, say it again. Oh, boy, that's great. But, Tessie, you're playing a character. You're supposed to be a lady. Who says I ain't? Maybe it's only a rumor. All right, take it again in front of your bunk. Oh, can't you see I love you, Steve Kim? Huh? Come in. Steve, I came to tell you... Oh, that... Miss Gateson. Say, you're just in time. Maybe you'll give Miss LaRue a few pointers. Pointers? Yeah, she's playing you in my vaudeville act. Okay, Toots, go ahead. Oh, can't you see I love you, Steve Kim? Huh? But you'll be much happier with the Count, Miss Gates, and I'm only a poor but honest reporter. Oh, but you don't have to be poor. Remember, I have the Gates and Millions. The Gates and Millions aren't enough. That's contemptible, Steve. You can't do this. No? Well, how about what you've done to me? It's my turn now. I'm going to make you the laughing stock of the country. I'm going to take you off the front page and put you in the comic section where you belong. Hey, Miss Gates, and how's about going in the act yourself? I can get you seven fifty a week. Yeah, maybe we can get the count, too. Can he hook? Can he sing? Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Leighton, Gateson, and Don Zelly. We'll roll them in the aisles. <laughs> I came up here to explain something to you, Mr. Layton, but you don't seem to be interested. Sorry, but i got to think of my art. Come on, Tessie. I love you, darling. You're my dream girl. And you're my dream man. Oh, boy. <laughs> but, Uncle Cyrus, you've got to do something. He'll disgrace me. The man's gone mad, I tell you. No, no, he hasn't. He's a smart fellow, and I like him. What theater is he going to play at? I think I'll go down and see him. Oh, but listen, you don't understand. He's only doing it for spite. He's a newspaper man. He'll ruin his career. Mm-hmm. Worrying about him now, are you? Well, after all, it is my fault. I started the whole thing in the first place. Oh, please. You've got to do something. Just this once. Please. Well, uh, 
What about your friend, the Count? Oh, I'm through with him. I showed Lois what he was. That's all I wanted to do anyhow. I see. Tony, darling, are you really in love with this reporter fellow? I don't know. I, I guess so. Yeah. I guess so, too. Well, there's only one thing I can do. I'll buy out the Express secretly, and I'll, uh, I'll make him city editor. Oh, Uncle Simon. Yeah. Listen, what is this? Get away from my desk. It's my desk now, Mr. Canavan. I'm the new city editor. What? You're crazy. There's my contract. We didn't weep. You're the new... Hello? Yes, sir? Canavan speaking. Take me off the payroll. Yeah, that's just what I expected from you, you big lug. I knew you wouldn't be man enough to take it. You think I'm going to take orders from a dirty double... Mr. Layton? Yes? The Count Dunzelli would like to see you. The Count? Send him in. Sit down, Marty. This will be interesting. Yeah? For who? Good morning. Come in, Count. What's on your mind? Uh, gentlemen, I will come right to the point. Would you be interested in publishing some uh, very charming love letters? Love letters? Uh, love letters. Of course, you understand, I cherish these letters very highly. I wouldn't give them up without uh, substantial consideration. Well, what makes you think we'd be interested in love letters? Oh, the whole world would be interested. They are from Tony Gateson. Tony Gateson? Well, sit down. Thank you. Uh, how much do you want, Count? Oh, it is a great bargain. Ten beautiful letters, $10,000. Okay, it's a deal. Where are they? All right here. And uh, when do I get my check? Oh, come in, Miss Gateson. So bad. Antoinette. Oh, no, no, don't leave, Miss Gates, and have a chair. The Count and I were just finishing a little business transaction. Uh, remember these letters? Roberto, give them to me. Oh, but they are no longer mine. Uh, you can still give them back if you want to. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, that would be uh, unethical. I've already sold them to you. How much? Uh, $10,000. I'll give you 25000 Well, I have not yet received the money. You take one cent of her money, and I'll have you arrested for blackmail. You made a bargain, and you'll stick to it. These letters belong to the paper. All right, Mr. Layton. Go ahead and print them in your filthy sheet. If they're fit to print. Oh, you at, l you at last found a chance to get even with me, both of you. All right, go ahead. I deserve it. I deserve it for getting mixed up with a couple of no-good so-and-sos like you two. We'll send you the check in the mail, Count. In the meantime, get your hand out of my pocket. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, you bought them very cheap. Oh, you think you should have more, huh? Well, uh... Marty, shall I give it to him? I'll toss you. Heads or tails? Tails. Heads? Heads it is. You give it to him, Marty. A pleasure. Oh. It's the first time I ever heard of a count taking the count. <laughs> Here you are, Steve. Here's the front page. How do you like it? Tonikins' letters to Countikins. Rip it out, Marty. We're not publishing the letters. Huh? Why not? I tore them up. Well, that, my friend, is just like tearing up $10,000 bills. So let them fire me. I'm thinking of quitting anyway. I'll pay it back to them a dollar a week. Oh, I don't think they'll fire you. <laughs> I just found out who owns this rag now. Mr. Cyrus Jeffrey. Oh, yeah? So that's how I got the job, huh? The little woman with the big bankroll. All right, that settles it. I'm clearing out. You're going to tell her? I don't ever want to see her again. Sure, sure, I know. Well, good luck, Steve. Thanks, Marty. See you around. Hello? Yes, sir? Call Tony Gates and tell her she can probably find Steve at Mike Allegretti's place. Hello, Stevie Kidman. Well, well, if it isn't the tin can heiress... Any statement for the press, Miss Gateson? I didn't come here to give an interview. I came to get one from you. This place is getting a little too ritzy for me. Excuse me. Steve, listen, please. I represent the Daily Express, and I'd like to ask you a few questions. Steve, don't you think Tony Gateson is a human being? When are you going to begin treating her like one? When are you going to begin acting like one yourself? Don't you realize she's sorry? Why don't you admit you're sorry? When did you first realize you loved her? Joe, give me that phone. Sure. Steve, Steve, when are you going to forget her money? Is it her fault that she's rich? Do rich women have to be old maids? Hello, give me Canavan, quick. Do you remember the time when you kissed her? Hello? Hello, Marty. Started to roll yet? All set to go, Steve. Well, hold it a second. I've got a scoop. Steve, when are you going to kiss her again? Right now. Oh, Stevie. <laughs> did you hear that, Marty? You could hear it in Brooklyn. <laughs> Well, print it, and here's your headline. Stevikins loves Tonikins. Next year, Twinikins. <laughs> the 
The curtain falls, and of course they live happily ever after. Now Bob Hope, Madeline Carroll, and Ralph Bellamy are back at the microphone for a curtain call. Just think what the newspaper business lost when Bob Hope became an actor. Oh, yeah? You know, I really put a lot of John Barrymore in my part tonight. <laughs> well, that, that's quite a coincidence, Bob. What is? Well, that's just what I was wishing I'd done, put John Barrymore in your part tonight. <laughs> Forget it, Bob. We'll stick up for you no matter what they say. Oh, thanks, pal. Say, Mr. DeMille, from your observation of the show tonight, do you think that I'm ready for a heavy dramatic role? Well, Say, in a picture like your Northwest Mounted Police with Madeline here and Gary Cooper? <laughs> Maybe you'd like a good fight scene, Mr. DeMille. Uh, wh what do you think of this, Bob? You're fighting with an Indian on the edge of a 50-foot precipice. You get closer and closer to the edge. Yes. Then you fall over. <laughs> Here's a great idea, CB. The camera follows him all the way down. He's fighting all the time. Boy, what a scene. What happens to me and the Indian? Well, I, I, I don't know. We never could find the last man who tried it. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm not ready for that part dramatically. Why, Bob, you mean you can't fight? Ralph, listen, every time I clench my fist, my right eye automatically orders a beefsteak. <laughs> you know, I think he's going to be hard to get for that part. And now, before we say goodnight, Mr. DeMille, I'd like to tell the audience what I think of the product behind this theater. From my own experience, I know that Lux Soap is a real help in keeping your complexion soft and smooth. I've used it for a long time myself, and I can sincerely recommend it to every woman. Hmm. After just looking at a good many thousand feet of your scenes on Technicolor film, Madeline, I can't imagine a better recommendation for our product. <laughs> Why, thank you, sir. What's the play in the Lux Radio Theater next week? Next Monday night, we're going to present Gary Cooper in The Westerner. And with him, we'll have Walter Brennan and Doris Davenport, the same stars who are in the picture. Our play is a rip-roaring story of the Old West, adapted from the Samuel Goldwyn picture just released. There's romance as well as adventure in this drama. And you'll hear Gary Cooper as the straight-shooting defender of the underdog settlers in Texas. Gary never misses. And I don't see how we can miss either with this cast in the Westerner. You've got a customer right here for that one, C.B. Well, I guess we'll be moving along now. Yes, uh, Madeline, I've got my car right out. I'm sorry, Bob. I have a date with Ralph. Oh, forget him. Come on. Wait I... a minute. You heard the little lady say she's already got a date with me. I'm going to take her for a ride in my car. Well, I'll take her for a ride in my car. I'll take her to Ocean Park. Well, I'll take her to Ocean Park. And then I'll take her to Ciro's for a big $10 dinner. Well? I'm still at Ocean Park. Good night. <laughs> I'll take you home, Madeline. <laughs> I'll take you home. That's what I was hoping. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, boys. <laughs> Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Gary Cooper in The Westerner with Walter Brennan and Doris Davenport. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying goodnight to you from Hollywood. <laughs> Heard in tonight's play were Lou Merrill as Uncle Cyrus, Ann Tobin as Lois, Eddie Walter as Judge, Stuart Buchanan as Findlay, Charles Seal as Brady, Frederick Mackay as Count Dunzelli, Barbara Meyer as Secretary, Ray Montgomery as Eggleston, Noreen Gamill as Landlady, Wally Mayer as Salesman, Earl Gunn as Police Officer, Sally Payne as Chessie, and James Eagles, Jack Bruscoff, Russell Williams, and Harold Daniels. Bob Hope returns to the air in his Pepsodent program on Tuesday, September 24th. His latest picture is Paramount's The Ghost Breakers. He will soon start work in The Road to Zanzibar. Madeline Carroll is now making the E.H. Griffith production, Virginia, at Paramount. Ralph Bellamy is now working in the Columbia picture, John Braun's Body, the first of the Ellery Queen series. The Scarlet O'Hara brooch offered you by the makers of Lux Toilet Soap is designed after one worn by Vivian Lee in Gone with the Wind, the Selznick International Picture produced by David O. Selznick and released by Metro Golden Mayer. Our music is directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Roick. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>